welcome to news click today we have with us a uh, professor of sociological theory at york university uh, york uh, university toronto canada but an italian uh, professor marcello Rus musto with us to talk to us about uh, political developments in europe especially uh, with regards to the left movement there but before we welcome professor uh, thanks for Marcello. the invitation it's a pleasure being here with you first question i like to pose to you is about uh, the political scenario in europe today uh, what do you think has uh, dramatically uh, taken place in europe today well i would like to start by <coughs> explaining to the people who are listening to us that the political scenario today in Europe has dramatically changed compared to the idea of Europe that um, people were used to, I don't know, 20 years ago, two decades ago, for example. So just to make some examples, we had countries like Italy, like France, like Spain, like Greece, where there was a very strong polarization of the votes of the you know political participation i'm thinking about uh, the cases of socialist parties and popular party in spain or the pasoc the socialist party and the new democracy in uh, greece or uh, the center left and the center right in france in italy so these two parties or sometimes these two coalitions uh, occupied at least two-thirds of the political scenario and they got at least sometimes more than two-thirds of the votes you the mean elections. post after the po uh, after the second war no i'm talking about in particular the last two decades as i said then later we can examine the, the period before i'm talking about uh, the end of Soviet Union and the new political scenario that started with that era, so the end of the Communist parties. Okay. This uh, bipolar organization of uh, politics in these countries, but you know, we could say the same about uh, Scandinavia where social democracy was uh, very strong, or uh, United Kingdom, even though now there is the, 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 the Liberal Party, but conservative and labor parties occupy this space. So the new phenomenon, I would like to start from this point, that we have now is that there are new forces that emerge into uh, political uh, uh, situation of Europe today. And these new forms emerge in particular, I would say, after or became stronger, in particular after the beginning of the economic crisis, where the crisis that erupted in the United States in 2007-2008 arrived to Europe. And uh, then later, perhaps we want to talk about the role that the European Union have in this you know, economic policy, etc. So, in order to go back to the first um, part of your question, now we have a political situation in this country, w in these countries where there are no longer only two big parties, but there are new forces. And these forces in some countries are new movements that did not exist before. I'll make the example of uh, the five star movements, for example. Uh, political party that in my country, the first time they went to the election, they became immediately the first party of the country, which is something unbelievable to conceive even 10 years ago, because Italy had this long tradition of the Christian Democratic Party and the Communist Party, as I told you, they had more than 30% of the votes. It has been like this after the end of World War II. And I could make an example in other countries like for example Podemos in Spain or for example the Front National, National Front in France or the case, the famous case of Syriza in Greece. So in order to overview the situation and um, complete my answer, I will say that there are new different forces that emerged in the past years and that you know, collapsed a little bit the, the political system that exists before. Now it is no longer 
center left and center right, but sometimes there are new parties, new political formations, sometimes radical left, sometimes far right movement, neo fascist movement sometimes, some other times populist uh, new demagogic movements but like for example the case the case of uh, UKIP in uh, England they already existed before but they became stronger in the past years mm -hmm. and they were the first party at European election in 2004 so these new forces have created a new political scenario a political scenario that I want to repeat this again that was unconceivable a few years ago what do you believe is the reason for this uh, collapse of this bipartisan uh, dominated politics? Well, um, or let me put it also add also that this is indicative of also a crisis of the ruling classes. Hmm. Let's start with the first part of the question. What it created this first of all with the crisis in 2008 that started in 2008 and then later became uh, even more complicated in particular for many countries of uh, uh, southern Europe where now there is a, a debt issue that is uh, um, very strong and very well known I'm not uh, going into this now but there is an economic situation now I better give some numbers, sometimes it's boring, but I think yeah. that uh, people should think about this. We have a rate of unemployment in countries like Greece and Spain that reached one quarter of the population. We have a rate of unemployment in countries like Italy or Portugal or France between 12, 17, 11 percent. So we have an incredible dramatic phenomenon of uh, more than one million young people between 18 and 29 years old leaving the country, leaving Italy, Spain, Portugal and Greece. From these four countries, we had for the case of Portugal, we know that there are at least 400,000 young people between 18 and 29 that left the country after 2008. And I'm talking about a small country like Portugal, I'm talking 400,000 people is a huge uh, part of the population. Where did they go? They go in uh, Germany, in uh, England, in sometimes when they had a very strong qualification, they went uh, to get a job outside. This is also a case for Italy, you know, all this uh, people who became important um, professor or uh, working as doctor, they found the resources to do this uh, on the other coast of the Atlantic in North America, for example. So you have a very uh, dramatic change, in particular a change for the new generation. I would like to stress this because this new generation for the first time after World War II, uh, they live in worse condition than their parents. They have to work now uh, seven days uh, a week when they got a job, when they are uh, lucky to get a job. They take two, three different jobs. So precarious job, flexibility is everywhere. Not talking of the other dramatic situation, which is the attack to social welfare. Because in the past 20 years, not only in the past seven, eight years after the crisis, but in the past 20 years, the European model has been attacked, has been has changed dramatically in many places, including in Scandinavia, uh, where, you know, there was the flag of uh, social welfare. So there is a dramatic economic change and this situation has generated um, issues in the society and you know, also the need for new responses. But I will say that the more important reason for the political changes that we have discussed so far is the fact that these two uh, alliances, these two poles, the center life and the, cen the center right and the center left, they have been following more or less the same kind of economic policies. So I don't like to say uh, liberals and socialists are the same. I don't like to say that all the cats in the night are black. No, I want to be very careful with this. But we can really say that in the past years, 
um, the policies of the center-left became extremely uh, liberal and they followed all the things that they were fighting 20-25 uh, years ago. I want to contextualize this uh, giving some references for uh, our audience. I'm talking about Tony Blair and the Third Way in the Labour Party. I'm talking about Schroeder in, in Germany. So I'm talking about radical changes that destroyed the last presence of social democracy in this, uh, in this part. Perhaps the, the, the only exception to this is Lionel Jospin in France, you know, with this left, uh, um, left uh, the la, la gauche plurale, plural left. But also in that case, they were, they were defeated. You know, the reform of the 35 uh, hours, uh, you know, of work uh, in, in one week, they were defeated. So in this period, the center left is doing exactly the same politics of the conservative of Christian Democratic Party, the, poli the policies that are imposed from European Union, from the so-called Troika, and there are no differences. I mean, why should I vote for the Socialist Party, the center-left, if actually there are those who follow more the, the, the policies of uh, liberalism? This is what happened. Let me say something about it, if I may, about Eastern Europe, because Eastern Europe generally is not considered in the debates about Europe, but we are talking about many uh, millions of people. Look at the case of uh, Hungary, for example, or of Poland. There were the socialist parties who introduced these austerity policies against the social welfare. And uh, these policies generated the, the social disaster that happened in the past years, and today, what do you have in these countries? You have a fascist uh, government in uh, Hungary. You have an extremely go conservative right-wing, far-right-wing government in Poland. By the way, the first time that a party is taking the full majority at the election after 1989, after the end of the so-called actually existing socialism. And of course, there is no way for the left to reopen a discourse to have credibility with the workers, uh, with the people. So this is what happened. These are the, 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 the problems that Europe is facing now. Um, I think this is a good point to then uh, come to, a, uh, to an issue which you have dealt with extensively in your writings, which is what has, what, and how did, how was the left impacted in Europe by the collapse of Soviet socialism in 1989? And what were the what has been the political trajectory of the left since then? I think it would be very interesting for our viewers to uh, to know that. Yes, this is a big topic. Uh, should be a topic only this one for an <laughs> interview. I, I will try I to give some references. Um, in uh, 1989, there is an epic change. There is a serious change in, uh, in um, European policy. Of course, it's the end of Soviet Union, it's the end of all the so-called socialist regimes of the Eastern European countries, including in Germany, German Democratic Republic. And it is the end of the communist parties. The big communist parties who were so strong, so important in political life of countries like Italy, France, also in France, you know, Historically, the Communist Party had around one-fifth of the votes of the, of the electoral body. So after this period, after this change, the majorities of these parties, you know that some of them already started to take some distances from uh, Soviet Union with the Eurocommunism, which was a, a moderate, a reformist project started in Italy with Berlinguer and then later followed by Carrillo in Spain, etc. So the majority of these political forces, mm -hmm. they joined the social democratic family and they went into this uh, group that today is called the group of socialists and democrats, which is, you know, in the European Parliament, the group where historically you find uh, 
parties like the socialist in France, the German social democracy in um, the, the, par the German social democratic party, etc. In Italy, this is the case. No, the majority of CPI of the Communist Party, they changed names, they founded a new party, they founded a new party, the um, Democratic Left Party, which later became the Democratic Left, because these people wanted to distanciate themselves to political organization, so the word party was skipped. And then this Democratic Left became later the Democratic Party, following this idea of Clinton, of United States, this is what happened with the Romano Prodi in Italy, at the same time that Blair was doing the new Labour Party. So there is a very strong um, difference with the uh, Communist Party. A difference that is not only in terms of uh, social policies, but I'm also thinking about another dramatic event that we have to consider when we talk about Europe today. War. The war, the fact that, you know, this party participated to the war in Yugoslavia in 1998. The prime minister in Italy who gave the Italian basis to attack uh, the former Yugoslavia country was a former leader of the Communist Party. And um, I'm thinking about the participation in Afghanistan, the participation in uh, Iraq, a little bit different. We should see some parties voted in favor, some other parties not, but there is a big change. So, only one small part of uh, this uh, old communist parties remain, uh, try to reorganize in a very uh, difficult times, because these are the times where really neoliberalism is a mantra. No, there is uh, the, the famous sentence of uh, Margaret Thatcher, there is no alternative. No? In this dramatic uh, scenario, in, uh, in France, in Spain, in Italy, in Portugal, in, in Germany later too, there is a sort of attempt to reorganize the left. Sometimes this attempt has been um, positive uh, and uh, these parties achieved 8 to 10 percent, 7 to 10 percent of the votes. Sometimes it has been very difficult to reopen a discourse, to reopen a space mm -hmm. for the left in these countries. Because I'm also talking about a labor movement that is changing. I'm also talking about unions that are no longer representative of uh, these millions of workers as it was in the past, in the 60s, in the 70s, in the golden age for the left mm -hmm. in Europe. And I'm also talking about the difficulties for social movements to reorganize themselves in this new complex political scenario. So these are some changes that happened immediately after uh, the fall of Berlin Wall in 1989.